Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked here on the channel. This is the series where I talk about every single book on my shelves because it will take us on a journey none of us were expecting. Today we are talking about S.A. Chakraborty's Devabad series. Some quick disclaimers before we start. I did have a review copy of at least two of the books in the series, possibly three. However, all the copies I'm going to show you I did actually buy myself. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books except my patrons and all opinions are my own. I will keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible while still talking about the series as a whole. If you do want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, pause the video, come back when you've read it, we'll talk then. If you really want to talk about spoilers, um, I have a video up just for Empire of Gold, which you can go check out. And I will link the story graph for the series down below in case you want to check out any user generated content warnings. Some of you might be thinking, hang on a minute, haven't you already reviewed this series? And kind of. In some ways you're right, I did a review of The Empire of Gold back in 2020. However, that was kind of just talking about this book. I've never really sat down and talked about all of the books in this series together. So if you've ever heard me or anyone else talking about David Bad and you've been wondering if you should pick it up, I'm gonna talk you through it now. Let's answer that question. This is a high fantasy, historical-ish fantasy, adventure fantasy series that came out between 2017 and 2022. The original trilogy does end in 2020, but they added on a short story collection in 2022, which is why those dates feel very broad for a fantasy series. But what are the books, you ask? Book one, The City of Brown. Book two, The Kingdom of Copper. Book three, The Empire of Gold, and the short story collection, The River of Silver. I have also listened to the audiobook of all of these. I highly recommend the audiobooks if you're interested, just so you know. S.A. Chakraborty or Shannon Chakraborty is a New Jersey based author who also wrote The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi, which came out earlier this year, 2023, when I'm filming. So last year, when you're watching this, Time is a weird soup. I would describe her writing as kind of historical inspired fantasy adventure books. I think is probably the best way to describe it. In my opinion, she has a real knack for writing romance and writing chemistry between characters, but that adventure thread really runs through both of her series. In The City of Brass, this one, we meet Nari, who is a young woman living in Cairo in the 18th century. She doesn't have a family. She doesn't know where she came from. She washed up on the shore of the Nile one day. That mystery is only compounded when one day, while working one of her many cons, she accidentally summons an ancient jinn warrior, who then takes her on an adventure to the fabled city of Devabad, the city of the jinn. I would say book one is split into two halves, half of which is a journey and half of which is a more political kind of fantasy. Uh, whereas book two and three are adventure books with a lot of politics in them is probably the best way to describe them. It wouldn't be unreasonable to say that all three books have a good mix of court politics-y kind of fantasy and adventure quest kind of fantasy at the same time. But why should you read these books? What reasons do I have to give you? I love the characters in this series. They are such good, tropey, goodness, wonderful characters. Nari is a fantastic protagonist. She is that classic con woman, ex street urchin archetype. She's got such a good brain on her. She's common sense, gumption, all of the above. She's so great. And the emotional journey that she goes on throughout all three books, it's just beautiful. A fantastic, wonderful fantasy protagonist could not ask for more. We also have a bunch of other characters we meet. This ancient Jin warrior Dara is a wonderful uh, foil to Nari in a lot of ways. Grumpy, ancient being, always good fun. We meet princes, princesses, uh, scholars, doctors, all of the above. Every single character that we get to meet in this story, I love for some reason or another, or I hate them deeply with a passion. And that is almost equally good for me. If you can make me really hate a villain, I know you've written a villain well. One thing I really like about the characters is how complex they become. So often they start in very tropey places and you think, oh, I know everything there is to know about this character and where this is going. And it'll get to really interesting moral dilemmas and the way that the characters respond to those and the way you learn about their past and their motivations and their goals through those little moments together is just wonderfully handled. I think these books have great characters in them and it's what drives my love for the series probably most of all. My second reasoning is plot and also emotions. Um, I really enjoy the plot of this series. It is one of those ones that 
you never really 100% know where it's gonna go. I think I talked about this in my review of Empire of Gold, but uh, when you get to the end of Empire of Gold, it feels like there's nowhere else the story could possibly have gone. But there was no point up until that ending where I could have told you that was where the story was going, which is just perfect writing for me. It's a perfect crafting of a series. Each one of the books feels complete in and of itself, but it still leaves you wanting more for the next book. And yeah, the journey that these characters go on, it's really emotional. I fully found myself weeping in book three. Both of the times that I've read it, fully weeping, which is not not overly unusual for me. I'm not going to claim that that's a wild thing to happen, but it is usually the sign that I really emotionally connected with a book and that the author is just hitting those particular buttons that will just make me cry. And book three does it uh, really intensely. <laughs> Another thing I want to talk about is the world building. I think this is probably the lightest element of this, especially for a fantasy novel. There's definitely, of course, a sense that the world building is there. I would say the world building more exists in cultures rather than in physicality of the world. So some people, for instance, Samantha Shannon will have a really good sense of like the agriculture of their world, a good sense of like the topography of their map even. I felt that less with this series and much more that there was a really good sense of the practices of the people who live in this world. What's their clothing like? What's their food like? What's their worship like? How do they get married? How do they get divorced even? What does a world with immortals and access to magic look like. And I really enjoyed those world building elements. I'm not slandering Samantha Shannon and suggesting she doesn't do that as well. Uh, just I think it's done really in depth in these books, particularly as we move into book two and book three. I think it's the benefit of having a protagonist who doesn't already exist in this world, who's visiting this world for the first time, is that you, the reader, get to have things explained as they are explained to the character, which helps with the full feeling of immersion. And it also avoids that um, feeling of being dropped in at the deep end without anyone to hold your hand, like you almost have the protagonist there holding your hand, which I appreciate. The last thing I want to talk about while I'm talking about positives is the readability of these books. I think they are incredibly easy, accessible reads uh, for very heavy fantasy novels. Empire of Gold is about 700 pages and I'm a fast reader, so bear this in mind, but I read it in a day. Uh, and part of that is that you just really get swept up in the story and you keep going with it. And the other part is that I think S.A. Chakraborty just writes very readable books. They're very easy to engage with. The sentence structure is nice and flowing. It doesn't feel like you're being hit against a whole bunch of impenetrable fantasy stuff all the time. I think that's also probably because they are quite tropey and tropey books just are easier to read in my opinion because you have to do less work in your brain. A at least a little bit, that's my theory. Readability uh, in my opinion is a huge plus. Uh, I don't like an overly complicated book and these aren't simplistic, they are just nice and good and it's not even easy to read. It's like enjoyable to read. It's a great reading experience sitting down and cracking the spine on these. Moving on to reasons that you might not enjoy this, reasons you might want to bear in mind if you're planning on picking these up. Um, they are slightly cheesy. I've mentioned it. I've mentioned tropes. I've mentioned that kind of familiarity. For me, a wonderful thing. I know for some people that might not be something they enjoy. I think the way that the tropes are used within this story is unique enough that it doesn't feel like a rehashing of anything else I've ever read. It just feels like a close cousin to a lot of things I've read before, which is nice for me. However, your mileage may vary. But maybe they're a bit too cheesy. Maybe they're a bit too dramatic. I personally love a dramatic story, so I'm okay with it. A lot of the books that I love kind of eternally that stay on my shelves forever have a lot of queer characters in them. This series doesn't really, it does. I'm, I'm telling a lie and they definitely develop that more towards the final books and the short story collection. But uh, just know that while this, while the queer characters do exist, it's very hush-hush in the world. And I know some people prefer not to read that kind of thing. I normally try and come up with a third reason you might not enjoy this while I'm writing these reviews. And uh, I didn't have one. I've just written, I love this series. Shh. If you have reasons you don't like this, it's fine. So yes, I'm sure if I sat down and nitpicked for ages, I could come up with a bunch of reasons that you might not want to read this. But honestly, this is one of my all time favorite series. I'm so glad I got to reread it to make this video. I will reread it again in the future because I love it so much. Much. I think I'll just touch on the fact that The River of Silver is a really great addition if you've not read it yet, um, because I guess that's the thing that's come out since I last talked about this series on the channel. It's a great short story collection that enhances a lot of elements about the world, about the characters. Some of it reads a little bit like uh, self-indulgent in terms of really caring about particular pairings or particular characters. Uh, I don't want to say it reads like fan fiction, because obviously it's the author's work, so she's not writing fan fiction of her own work, but it has that lean to it. But for me personally, 
I love that. I think if more authors wrote me happy, lovely stories about bits of their world that I enjoyed and characters that I loved, I would buy a hundred short story collections like this, honestly. In terms of other things you might want to read, this is just kind of a chance for me to talk about some of my favourite series. Um, series that give me similar feelings in terms of the joy I get when I realise I get to read them again, and that sense of them being books that will be with me my whole life. Uh, Winter Night Trilogy. I've not reread it in maybe two years, and I'm feeling the burn deep inside me to pick them up again. It's a fantastic Russian folklore inspired series. Jade City by Fonda Lee is much more of a kind of semi-modern city fantasy story, but it is so good. And it hits me in a lot of the same emotional places as Dave Abad does. I'm pretty sure I've got some videos somewhere of some of my favourite series. I will endeavour to link them down below so you can check them out if you would like to. They might be getting on a little bit now though. To answer our question from the beginning of the video, should you read the Dave Abad trilogy? Hopefully it's come through that I think absolutely yes, if you love a slightly tropey fantasy series. This is one to pick up. It's so good. I love it so much. I will talk about it till the end of days. Uh, I recommend it all the time. It's one of my favourite city fantasies. It's one of my favourite romantic fantasies. It's one of my favourite adventure fantasies. Historical adjacent fantasies. So much to talk about. I love them. Yes. Have you read these or do you now have plans to? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I'd like to say an enormous thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, access to my weekly live streams and more. If you'd like to join their number, that's linked below as well. Thank you so much to you for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. This is the series where I talk about every single- This is the series where I talk about every single book on my shelves because own- Essay Chakraborty or Shannon Chakraborty is a new-